Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Demartini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. Welcome. It's so great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on for sure. I am so excited about the show today with Echo Bodine. And the reason I'm excited about it, I'm just going to kind of try to put it up here, uh, Jacob and company. Uh, The reason I'm excited to talk with her is beyond being known internationally for her work, spiritual healer um, and a writer. um, She's been on radio, television, NBC, everything you want to think about. Why? Because when you are called to a pathway in life, see, this is what I discovered this morning. Again, discovered it this morning. And, and you know, I love the way the universe kind of taps me on the head gently and then slaps me right up in the head with a big fat two by four. Yep, yep. I love it. But when you're on a pathway, that is your pathway. Now, Do we kick and scream about it? Or is the kicking and screaming have less to do with the pathway and more to do with your fear of your pathway? So I'm going to tell you for me today, it's my fear. And so when I think about, you know, happy to live a happily ever afterlife. When I think about this book and I go through here and I read the book, And we talk about spirits, where they are, why they haven't gone through, how they are in front of us. I can't help. I have to do it, Benny. I have to reference the latest, what I call, blockbuster hit that I think Netflix and Hulu had the guts to take out of the DC comic books Like they had the guts to actually do a series on the Sandman. Now, why am I saying that? Because when you decide to take that on and you are going to show not just the Sandman, who is the realm of dreams, but then you're going to show the Sandman siblings. One of them might be called the angel of death. She was amazing. But they walked you through a series in one, one, of, one of the episodes in Sandman of how death works. And when I, and I read the book and I'm just thinking, oh my gosh, this is why she's writing the book. You see, you see what I love about what I do is I can have one foot in our pop culture and the next foot in the afterlife. But here's what I want to say, and I want to ask my my very special guest today, world-renowned psychic, spiritual healer teacher, ghostbuster. I'm a crust buster. She's a ghostbuster. When our pop culture starts to reflect what someone may have taken years to write and put in a book, I dare all I dare anyone to tell us we're not connected. The Echo, thank you for joining me here today, okay? Oh my gosh, yes, of course. This sounds so exciting. Can you tell us more about the show? Well, I don't want to give the whole thing away, but first of all, I want to congratulate the producers for not crazy deviating away from the original. Okay, Mm -hmm. I just want to say that. Okay. But the second thing that's super important is they they did do one deviation, but it actually was better. But what I loved about it was just like you do in your book and the way you capture us, the way that you talk about, when you talk about, for example, fear of flying and you you take us through almost heaven, the part about almost heaven in the book and you write about it so descriptively. And let me, may I? 
because this is what this series did visually. But when you go through here and you say things, my experience is that it's dark, empty void where souls wander around waiting to be told that they are done suffering and go, go to heaven. Many of these souls are good Catholics or are committed to suffering as long as necessary. If it means they can eventually meet God or do. See, you take us in there. That's what I will say to you about this. Because if they were going to demonstrate a comic character, which mm -hmm. was so touching, our, I mean, this was one of these, I hate to even call it a comic character. It's like almost an embarrassment because when you look into the deep realm and when Sandman says at the end, I am the one, I control consciousness. I'm like, what? Whoa. So, Whoa. But there is so much that had to do with the transition from the earth skin. Okay. Yep. whatever the next place is and when the they showed the angel of death she was kind okay. and and this is what i this is what i loved it's not a mistake that i get to talk to you about this and then netflix comes out with that we are all connected aren't we, we let's are. start there honey we really are we are connected you know what the, the greatest example of that was the pandemic <sighs> Oh my God. But I mean, we've never had uh, anything like that in our on our planet where we are all going through the same thing yeah. and we realize how connected we are. Yeah, we realize if we're infected with COVID, holy smokes, we could give it to any one of our brothers and sisters on this planet. I mean, yeah, yeah that's, yes, we are kind of getting chills after chills here. Holy smokes, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And you know what? Here's where we are. I love that you brought that up. Uh, not only are we still connected, but COVID has never been more vibrantly alive than it is now. Hello. I can't keep track of my staff and who's coming in today, who was around. Some, I mean, honestly, all of us. And I went through the whole three years without getting it. But what I love about this conversation with you, and I love it, love the book, is how beautifully you give us what I call knowledgeable options. Oh, good. Right? Oh, God. Because, God, girl, I'm chilling everywhere. Right? Who doesn't want to know what the heck is a ghost? And is that going to be what I am? So let's start the conversation out for you, because this has been your life's path. This is your soul's yeah. path. Yeah. This book has come out in a time where we need to, to, to talk about it. But I love what you say here. Stories of trapped souls and how not to become one. Mm -hmm. I need to now listen to you because I don't think any of us want to be that, do we? No, we don't. No, we don't. You know what, Patty? Most of the ghosts that I've met are men. And that makes sense to me because they don't want to talk about these things. They don't. You know, it's like, no, so many have said to me, um, like when I, when I'm working with someone that's dying and I've said, you know, have you thought about death? I mean, what are your thoughts about? It? Oh, no, 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 I don't want to talk about that. No, 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 no. Even though they're on their deathbed, they, no, 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 they don't want to talk about it because it's scary. Okay. Yeah. But you know what, Patty, I have learned so much more since writing that book because i was going to ask you that question yeah honey i've had three friends die in the last year and these are people i'm close to so i'm able to check in with them and find out i was able to watch them just kind of sit back and watch them and it's been really interesting to see okay when she died um the most recent one, she, okay, and this is one of us, people that, that, that believe like we believe. Okay. Yeah. So she goes to the hospital because she didn't feel good. The last thing she expected was to die. She thought she'd be going home and boom, she died. Okay. Yep. Her soul comes out of her body. And the first thing, and, and I've seen this a lot, is people think, okay, it first is, is this a dream? Am I dreaming right now? Um, let's see, my body's there and I'm here. 
Okay. And they kind of really, they, they just kind of take a quick inventory of what's going on in their surroundings. Oh, oh, I, I think I died. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, wow. Look at all these people. Oh my gosh. Everybody's so sad. Oh, geez. Everybody's freaking out. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And then you've got somebody either coming from the other side to talk to you, to help you understand what's going on, or they're already there in the room when you come out of your body. Right. Okay. And so she was, it was really interesting because she said, I, I, she said specifically to me, okay, don't worry. I know what's going on. I know what's going on. Really? But she said, I, I don't remember death. I don't remember that I've been through this before. So she said, it's going to take me a couple of days. Um, Okay, so then relatives of her came. I think it was her mom that came, explained to her, yes, honey, you have died. Oh, okay. Uh, and all she was worried about really was her husband because this was such a shock to him. Okay, so her mom kind of reassured her, no, people are going to come for him, and now we've come for you, and, you know, let's let's go on. Uh and she said to me, Echo, there really is a light. Uh, and there was a group of people. When she said, when I went through that light, there was all these people that I know that are deceased. And they were so happy to see me. And she said, Echo, it was like I was born again. And, and she <laughs> said, but she said, I still need, I need time. I, I, I need time because this is all happening so fast. Okay. Yeah. And so... Patty, really, she had like, I don't know, honey, it was, it, it was a couple days, you know, I would think, oh, should I check in on her? No, nah, just let her be. Okay. And then it was, oh, you know what, what it was, was um, she did come and she'd say, wow, this is really a trip. And uh, she'd say, this place is gorgeous. You know, I forgot how cool it is. Um, uh, she said, I'm so glad that people are watching over her husband. And then <clears throat> she said, I can't, <coughs> excuse me. She said, I can't say much right now because I'm still, she said, I went through a two day process of clearing earth's energy off of me. Yeah. And she said, boy, that's a heavy energy. And she said, so it took two days to just clear and clear. And she said, and now, <coughs> excuse me, she says, I'm trying to uh, get used to how light I am. She said, yeah. so this is, this is quite a transition that's taking place, okay? And, um, and then, Patty, what was really cool was I was on my, I was riding on my bike, my recumbent bike, just yeah. poof, there she is. Wow. And uh, she and I told her, I said, I can't go to your funeral because I've got an interview. And she said, no problem. She said, here, grab a piece of paper. I want you to tell them some things. OK, so I quick grabbed whatever I could find. And she literally stood there and dictated to me. She thanked everybody for taking care of her husband. Um, and you know what, honey, I don't even remember now what she said anymore. It, I wrote it. I gave it to somebody that attended the funeral. It was her message to everybody that was at the funeral, which yeah. was really sweet. And yeah. uh, and my friend who took it to the funeral said, oh my God, Echo, everybody knew it was from yeah. her. So I, I'm telling you, I'm learning cool stuff. And that's why I was so excited to talk with you because, you know, I know these books get written a bunch ago and then here we are. I want to take a short break, Benny and Jacob. When we come back, I want to really talk about this because I was reading your book and I was reading your book simultaneously while, while I was watching this thing oh and, <laughs> and what was so fascinated about it. And I don't want to give a lot away because for those people that watch it, but but I was watching it and I got to the episode where there was a ghost that did not cross over. And it was a very interesting, very critical part of the show because it was much more than that. So when we come back, 
I want to talk with, I mean, honestly, that's why you got to go say it. You got to say, it. but I want to talk with you because there is a fear that we have. And you don't have to come from, you don't have to be Catholic to have the fear. You don't, right? I'm not saying, when we come back, I want y'all to think about, you know, what Echo has put in her book. I want you to think about this. If these are stories about trapped souls, what do you want to know so as not to become one? Because in the back of your mind, what are you thinking right there? We're going to take a short break, Benny. Uh, Jacob, when we come back, more about how to live a happily ever afterlife. Fabulous guest. Echo Bodine. We're not going to give you all the secrets in the book, but I'll tell you when I opened up the book and I looked at reason number one, I said, oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> Benny, let's go to a break. We'll be right back. Hey everybody, welcome back. It's so great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on. First of all, I want all of you to know how to find out more about Echo. Go to the website, echobodine.com, E-C-H-O-B-O-D-I-N-E.com. Very simple. Mm -hmm. When you get there, you're going to be uh, just beautiful. You're going to be struck by the beautiful colors and the message. Trust the voice within. OMG, did I need to have that today? You know, I started my day really quite energized and chipper. Now, what is it in life that could get us off our game? Echo is just talking about it. But when you come here and you take a look, you're going to look at so many things that she is bringing into the world to help all of us become more present in our lives today. Not by creating a life that allows us to take forever to fill our heart's desires, but do you want to know what happens after you die? Do you have a thought about that? Do you want to know maybe what are some of the reasons that folks just don't want to cross over? Echo, thank you so much for today. Uh, also, the book's pretty much available everywhere, right? Yep. Mm hmm Okay. Yes, it is. Uh, when you go to the website, certainly you can get the book. Uh, it's available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Take a look at some of the reviews. But this is a book that really tackles the question: Why are there some spirits that just have not gone through the light? Right? What was it about this topic that called to you? Because I know this had to change you to write it. But I know that you wrote this book very clearly to me because you needed to answer questions for people. Am I right? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> yes, you are right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it was, uh, Penny, you know, to tell you the truth, one day I was mowing the grass and, <laughs> and this whole thing came into my head about the simple reasons why ghosts remain earthbound. And it was like, oh, oh, I have to help people understand this so that they don't become one. Oh, I mean, it just seemed like such a simple thing to just pull all the information together instead of, yeah, I have a little bit of information here and a little bit yeah. of information there. Do you know, Patty, when, <clears throat> whenever my, I don't do ghost, bust, ghost bustings anymore. I, it, God, I got so burned out on ghosts that, and you know, really, honey, it's like ghost counseling, not ghost busting. I mean, how can you bust a ghost? What? You, you can't. Know, right. Right. So, I get it. So what we do is when we've gone into these homes and we see the ghost, we always ask them two things. What's your name and why are you here? And that's how, that's the basis of the book is we're talking about, you know, a lot of people don't even know that ghosts are actually human beings, that, that they're souls of human beings. They think ghosts are something really scary and horrible and the truth is they're people they're people and yeah. they have their reasons and <clears throat> i mean you know as you read the book it i think i think for people as they read the book they read the six different reasons why yeah it's kind of like oh yeah that makes sense oh yeah that makes sense too oh yeah that makes sense too you know but Patty, I mean, don't you think that we've all been raised to believe that 
We suffer here on earth, and then our rewards are in heaven. This magical Wizard of Oz place. Um, <clears throat> but we've also been taught that, okay, if you're good, you get to go to that really nice place. And if you're bad, you go burn in hell. <clears throat> yeah. And so that's why a lot of these ghosts are just afraid. They're just afraid. And a lot of them don't even feel worthy. Honey, I actually met a guy, a ghost, in an attic. He and he was just this little guy, and he looked all tattered. And and when you know, I went up to him and I said, you know, hello, who are you? He gave me his name, which I don't even remember right now. And then I said to him, why don't you go on to the other side? Why don't you go to heaven? And he said, well, look at me. He said, I'm a hobo. I can't go into heaven looking like this. And I thought, oh my God, you poor thing. I mean, he's, it's his belief that you can't look like a hobo and go to heaven. So that's what a lot of it has been, is just talking to these folks and saying, yeah. oh my goodness, you know, whatever your name is, George, let's say it's George. Uh, George, God could care less what you look like. It's okay, just go. Mm -hmm. And, um, but you know what I did? I said to him, Mom, okay, how would you like to look when you go into heaven? And uh, it was so sweet to just watch him and his thoughts were creating a completely different outfit on. And, <clears throat> and I said to him, okay, now look at yourself. And he looks and he was so surprised. And I said, see, go on home. And so he did. He yeah. left and went on home. You know, I love this because you know this and I know this. Um, ghosts have been the topic of conversations for eons. Yes, they yeah. have. They may not, thousands of years ago, they may not have been called ghosts. I don't know what the Aramaic version of that is. Yeah. But conceptually, you know, there has been the notion, mm -hmm. the notion of them. Yeah. And, you know, as we move forward in the world and we look at some of the things that you, you wrote here, and I love that you gave the ego a place <laughs> in the afterlife because there are many people that don't, right? I know. Right? I, they think, oh, I'm here. I got this ego. Then I die and I have no ego. Oh, honey. But that's, you that's brought the question. ego into the afterlife. Can you tell us about that? Because it is fundamentally the basis for a number of these reasons, if not them all. I know. I know. Right? Yes. <clears throat> I don't know why people think that when we die, our ego goes away. It What? It doesn't. I mean, you know, like I told you, um, one of my friends that did in the last year, he... Uh, was a, a well-known doctor, okay, and um, his whole, I mean, he was a doctor, but then his, his other life here on earth was all about reincarnation, it was, his company was reincarnation and research, okay, and when he died, he died of a heart attack, he was just shocked, just absolutely shocked, and when I asked him, how are you? All he could think about was his work. He said, well, what's going to happen to all my work? Um, what's going to happen to all my work? I, 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 I can't be dead. What's going to happen to my work? I mean, and I said, um, well, you know, you can carry it on on the other side. And he said, oh, this is just, this is just so upsetting. I'm, I'm so upset. And okay, so he, he was on the other side when we were chatting. And uh, he said, I just, I just don't know what I'm going to do. And so if you, Patty, it was so clear to me as I was listening to him talk that this is his ego. His ego yeah. is freaking out because kind of like, do you know who I am? And do you know what I did? And mm -hmm. well, I've since checked in with him and he said, oh, I, I'm, I'm so much better. He said, I'm carrying on my work here. I'm teaching about reincarnation here. Um, and so, again, it seemed to me like, okay, his ego is continuing to keep him in this place of importance. Okay. And do you know who I am? Do you know how much information I have? Uh, okay, good. Now, 
And so he's continuing it on on the other side. Yeah. But I felt bad for him because it's like there was no thought of relaxing, maybe going fishing, uh, taking a break. Uh, no, it was this drive that he has inside. And our ego does not die when we die. It's part of our personality. And so, you know, it seems to me, uh, it seems to me that in the last, I'd say three to five years, there's been a lot more attention for, let's see, how do I want to say this, about ego. It seems like for yeah. many, many years, okay. Yeah. But now it seems like people are really looking at it in a different way, trying to calm it down, trying yeah. to put it in perspective. And <clears throat> so I'm seeing that with people on the other side too, that are working on their ego. Yeah. So, yeah. And, you know, I think what we're trying to do also with ego is we're trying to, you, you know, look for years in the field of psychology, um, decades, you know, people talked about the ego as something really awful. Yeah. And yeah. yet I, I believe things like ego are given to us not because they're really awful and they have a purpose, yes. right? Yes. Things have yeah. a purpose. Yes. Um, yes. Ego allows us to achieve phenomenal things. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, it also could allow us to achieve phenomenal things at the expense of other people. Yes. But that's why we have a conscience, right? Yes. So there are these things that create the harmony of energies. And this is what I love about what you write, because there's this other thing I want to ask you about, because you talk about belief. And I love that you talk about belief. You know, there was oh, an belief. Okay. <laughs> I yeah. just said belief. Belief. You um, know, the idea of this is what you believe, if you believe. Oh. And I love this. There was a fantastic movie that Kevin Costner was in. It was called Dragonfly. Yes. And yes. if you watch Dragonfly, right? Yep. The entire movie was based on belief. Yes. Yes. And yes. messages from the other side. Yes. But yes. belief was an important driver. What that what he believed oh. in, despite what everybody thought around him. Yes. And so people don't think that that carries over, but you say it does. There is oh. a belief we have before we pass. Yes. And that belief can get us stuck, right? Yes, yes Betty. So stuck. Yes. Yeah. And that's really, you know what? That's why I'm glad I'm doing interviews because it's it's so important to ask people, what are your beliefs about death? What do you believe? What do you think? Where do you think you're going to go? Uh, you know, honey, really, like even in the book, I write about people who don't believe in life after death. Yeah. So they come out of their body and they're like, well, I don't know what to do. I, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm not, what, what am I? They don't, they don't know they're a soul. They don't believe in life after death. They, they think, and I've had many people say that to me. Oh, once you die, you're done. That's it. You're done. You don't exist any longer. Yeah. I, yeah. Believe me. I know. But I've had people say that to me. Yes. And so these folks are like, well, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why I'm here. I, I don't know what I am. So that's why it's so important to have these conversations because it, Okay, oh boy, I'll tell you, our beliefs keep us so stuck and so uninformed. And and then you know what else is, and then we get into this, no, this is my belief, this is how it is. And they refuse to even think about thinking a different way. So yeah. that's why it's so good we're having these conversations, Patty. Yeah, boy, that is the definition of stuck. Yeah. That yes. is the definition of stuck. Yes. When you yes. are so embedded and yes. tangled up yep. in a particular belief or conviction or whatever the language fits for all of you listening, yes. when you are so definitive about something that you can't even be open to an open. That's right. You know, you're so in this, right? Yep. Yep. And we see this, we see this over and over, but I just didn't understand this. I didn't understand this aspect of it. You know, there are so many in our pop culture, one of the most, there, there are two pop culture iconic representations of ghosts okay. that almost 
everybody, at least everybody in the United States is familiar with. One is Patrick Swayze and Ghost. Yep. Almost everybody is like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> and what I loved about that movie is, you know, they took a script right out of your playbook. Yeah. They didn't make him to be some organic, uh, you know what I'm saying? They didn't yes. make him some crazy yes. you know, thing. Yes. They made him a soul yeah. Yeah. with his beliefs, yeah. why he was still there, yeah. right? Which you talk about, there are reasons that people stay. Maybe yeah. it's a possession. Maybe it's an obsession. Maybe it's for another person that maybe... <sighs> why do we have such a hard time at looking at the afterlife life and how these things show up what is what it gets in our way even though we all watch that movie and we're like yeah i buy into it a hundred million percent yeah. i buy into every part of it whoopi goldberg i the psychic <laughs> the, the whole thing I, the bad guy the yeah. ghost you know, walking through walls, moving creepy. chairs. I buy yep. into the whole thing. I've watched it 10 times. Okay, yep, yep. But yep. maybe that's not going to be for me. Maybe I'm not going to. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, honey, I do. I do. And I think what you just said, maybe that's not going to be for me. Yeah. That's, that's right where people get stuck is. Yeah. Well, yeah, maybe that's going to be that way for you. But for me, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I talk in the book about a book. Um, that was a bestseller a few years ago by a pastor and he had a near-death experience so he went over to the other side and and he came back and he told in his book he said that heaven you know was wonderful and that what we do we sing praises to the lord all day long that's what they do in heaven okay um the, Okay, that's his belief. And he's teaching others that that's what we do when we get to heaven. We sing the Lord's praises all day. Well, <clears throat> okay, so now all of his followers are, are believing that that's what we do. Honey, I have met teenage ghosts, and I've said to them, why are you here? Heaven's going to be really boring. I'm going to get over there. I'm going to get angel wings. I can never go to a party again. The parties are here. There's nothing going on over there. And so they, I, I went to a high school that was haunted. There were 36 young souls there. And I said to them, why are you all here? Oh, because this is where the parties are. Heaven's going to be a boring place. Again, that's their beliefs. That's yeah. what they've been taught. They're going to teach other people that. So part of the big problem is that we all have different beliefs about it. And people that are in a position of authority, like a pastor, <clears throat> people are going to believe that whatever they say, that's how it's going to be. Yeah. And that, 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 let's talk about this for a minute. But I want to just tell everybody, if you're just tuning in, I am here with the most amazing Echo Bodine. We are talking about, and I know Jacob's putting this on the screen too, how to live a happily ever afterlife. See this book right here, everybody? But this book it has a very specific, very specific uh, group of messages. And so you have the stories of trapped souls and how not to become one. Mm -hmm. And that's really kind of cool because this is from your own experience. This is from you helping, yeah. right? Yeah. This is, you know, this is born out of, look, this is the story. This is what I've discovered. This is how we can avoid it. And this is what we can do if we are stuck. Right. Um, and, you know, it may be one, it could be all of these reasons you put in the book. Yeah. yeah. But you see, if we understand this, what I hear you saying is we can do something about this now. Yes. Oh, gosh, yes. Right? Yes, 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 yes. Because yes. that's, <laughs> that's what I think you're talking about. Um, it also helps us understand why one of our loved ones may be here, yes. may be here, and we get signs of it. Yes. Now, let me let me ask you about that, because people have experience where they get signs. 
I have talked about an instance with Linda's mom, who was like my mom after she passed. And Linda and I were in a room and we were talking about something and I don't even know what it was, but it obviously it was something Joan wanted us to pay attention to. Okay. What did Joan do? Well, we're sitting there and we hear a crash. Like, oh my God, what broke in the bedroom? Yeah. Go in the bedroom. One of the dragon lamps that she gave me. Yes. Jumped off. Oh, the dresser <laughs> to the floor crashed nothing was broken oh god <laughs> nothing <laughs> two days yeah. ago now this happened years ago but okay. two, now i pay attention when joan shows up i don't know where joan is i don't yeah. know what the message is yeah two days ago my friend sends me a text message okay. wanting to show me the hummingbirds in the backyard of a place i live so instead of sending it to me and Linda, yeah, he sends the text to me and Linda's mom who passed Joan. And I said to Annie, Annie, do you know you sent the message to Joan? <laughs> now, I don't have a lot. I, you know, all I know at the moment, when Joan shows up this way, she's trying to get my attention. I'm not quite sure what. But can you talk about this? Because... A lot of people get afraid. Yeah, I know. Right? Yeah. Uh, Linda and I, we looked at that dragon lamp because Joan gave that to me purposely even before she passed. Okay. Okay. So out of everything in my house, it had to be the dragon lamp. That's how we know it's Joan. Yep. And it had to not break. Yeah. But it crashed. Mm -hmm. So help us understand when we have these loved ones that are here, they're everywhere. It isn't always like in the horror movies that they're trying to harm us. Do you yeah. see what I'm saying? Oh, yes, 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 yes. No, believe me. I mean, think about it. Think about it. If you're dead and you've got loved ones on the earth plane and you you want them to remember you. You 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 don't want them to forget you. They they and you want to come and visit them and you want to tell them that you still love them and hey, I'm still here and I'm alive and I'm happy. And so that's what so much of it is, is it's just a reminder. It's a reminder from Joan of, hey, I'm here and I still love you. And uh, remember, I got you this lamp. You know, it's a happy thing for her to be able to do something like that. And that's what our loved ones do. They try to think of something you know, like so many people think that uh, when they see a red card cardinal, that it is a deceased loved one. And, uh, you know, even me, when for the last week, I've had a red cardinal jumping all around the grass. She, I mean, she's, no, it's a he because it's God, gorgeous red. Yeah. But I mean, there he is every day jumping around. <laughs> and, and a red cardinal was my mom's favorite thing. Okay. So... Yeah. And people say, well, how can, okay, it's very easy for a soul that is um, energy, it can take, a soul can take a little bit of its energy and put it into the little body of a bird and and jump around and, and do things. They, you know, the people on the other side, they're very clever and they talk to each other. And, well, hey, how did you get your loved one's attention? Well, how did you get her? Well, I did this. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. It's really cool. I mean, they want us to know they're still alive. They're looking forward to seeing us, to being with us again. But in the meantime, I'm still alive. I'm still doing stuff. I still remember the dragon lamp. Um, isn't this fun, <laughs> girls? It's kind of like that. It's, it is. Yeah. I mean, what? Who? who even <laughs> knew Annie had Joan's phone number in her? I mean... I, I mean, that is the most bizarre of bizarre things. Did right? she know? Did she know that she, she didn't know she did it? No, I had to email her back. I had to text her back. And I said, yeah, thank you. Great picture. Thank you for the hummingbirds. But did you realize I, I did? I had to say, did you realize that you sent me the text message and Joan, Linda's mom, and Annie knows Joan passed and Joan. And she said, no, she did not. No, know. no. She's <sighs> like, oh, my goodness. You know, she, she's like, 
I did what? <laughs> but you see, I know enough. I know enough about things like this to say, oh, it's really not about Annie and it's not about the text message. And isn't it interesting? Annie is sending hummingbirds pictures Aww. of hummingbirds. Aww. And so I have to get quiet and just hear what Joan wants to say. And you know, honey, so often it's just, Hi, hi. It's just I'm, hi. Yeah, it's. I'm still alive. <laughs> I'm still. I still exist. That's. You know, I've I've met some people on the other side. They're so worried that their loved ones are going to forget them. So they think of creative little ways to let people know they're still alive. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and and I want to get back to something you said. For those of you, again, I want to make sure you know how to find out more about Echo. It's very simple. All you have to do is go to Echo's website, which is Echo Bodine, B-O-D-I-N-E. And once you get there, you'll know you're there. You see this beautiful, beautiful watercolor. Um, and then also, if you scroll down, you'll see the book. You'll be able to get it from Amazon. Um, I want to get back to something you said earlier because I, I wanted to hear more about it. I know that you cannot write a book like this without it impacting you in a way where you have to change. Mm -hmm. Can you just share a little bit about what that transformation looked like for you, what that change was for you? Oh, man. <clears throat> Honey, I think it's been a lifetime, really. Just little yeah. change, little change, little change, yeah. little change. And then, but you know, Patty, it's interesting that you asked me this because lately, I ever since the book came out, I thought, you know what, Echo, you know a lot of stuff about death. It's almost like I'm realizing that, oh, I I know a lot about this stuff. <clears throat> I don't know why my throat's acting up. Um, God, it just, like I said, honey, that day I was mowing the grass, and it yeah. all just kind of came to me that, wow, you know A, B, C, D, E, and F. You could put all this in a book and you know the other thing is I was at a funeral two days ago uh or no uh <clears throat> a week ago and honey my attitude is so different about death compared to the, all the other people at the funeral and you know I saw the guy he was there his soul was there he was so happy that all of his friends were at this funeral and <laughs> So I'm seeing him with this huge smile on his face and oh, he's so happy. And and I'm and I, I remember at a certain point I went, oh my God, wait a minute, wait a minute. Everybody's here, they're crying, they're sad, they're they're uh, lonely, they're freaking out. And I'm standing here watching him smiling because he's so happy to see everybody. And so, you know, sometimes I have to watch my enthusiasm about the soul because I get excited, you know, um, I get excited for souls when they, yeah. when they yeah. go through that transition. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I, I totally love that we are able to have a conversation like this where, you know, once upon a time, it wasn't okay. But you see, you know, there are so many things that have opened us up now, you know, mm -hmm. People want to talk about the downside of social media and the downside of the internet, but honestly, in so many ways, it has brought us closer because it's given us information where we can find common ground, yeah. where we can have conversations about things that we couldn't have with our parents, right? right. I mean, I don't know about you. I was very fortunate to have my stepmom okay. and we could talk about the afterlife and she had our own perspective on heaven and hell. And her view was, girls y'all don't have to worry about hell we got it right here that was her perspective it's like don't worry there is no hell yeah that's right you're going to go through some stuff in this on this earth yeah. and you're going to get through it and you're going to live some you're going to have some great things happen but you will have to go through the fire is what she would say okay so her view was she had already paid her dues there was no way she was going to what anybody referred to as hell yep i was going to happen for her and that was her story. And she was sticking to it. Good, good. That was it. But she had no conception okay. or at least wouldn't share with us what she meant by heaven. 
Okay. But what she would share was a place of total bliss. Yes. That was her view. I've and, seen it. It's amazing. It's and an that's really place. what I want to say in the couple minutes we have left, because you really touch upon so many things. And there's one in particular that I think if people are struggling with this inner earth skin, yeah. it's not going to go away. And that is being terrified of change. And you talk about that, right? I mean, can you believe it, Patty? Some of these souls I just can. Get, I mean, don't I, like know I, I know people. I know people. Yeah, I know. I know people. And what is the ultimate change? Get it. I know, I know, but they say, no, I'm not going. I, I, I don't like change. Honey, did I write in the book about the guy, the ghost that in the 54 Chevy? I can't remember if I wrote about it or not. This guy, ghost, he lives in his 54 Chevy on earth. Because he said, no, I'm not leaving my car. It's like, oh my God. And when I told his wife, when I went in the house and I said, do you know that your husband, she goes, yes, he loved that car more than any of us. Okay. He doesn't want any change in his life. Yeah. So he lives in his car. Yeah. So here's really the kind of the cool thing. I'm like, when I go, I'm taking my Harley with me. Okay. Right? And probably I'm going to get a new one when I go. Okay. Oh yeah. So, probably. You know, it, it, right. So, I mean, I love that what you've done is you say, look, be aware that these are the potholes you can create for yourself now in this earth skin, yes. because if you create them now, and we say this, everything is energy, even our thoughts and even our belief. So why wouldn't they, beliefs, energy, why wouldn't that energy transmute to where we go? Isn't that what you're saying? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, you and we can change it. Yes, and if you want to have a brand new Harley in heaven, you can do just that. Yes. I know I can. I, yes. I and, and I'm going to have so much fun on it, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Echo, I can't thank you enough for joining me here today. Um, thank you for t tackling a topic yes. that a lot of people that talk about this realm are really afraid to talk about. Yeah. But you see, what yeah. you brought forward is not just another book about the afterlife, but you brought an empowering book forward that says, wait a minute, you can be empowered in this life mm -hmm. and you can be empowered in the afterlife. Yep. Thank That's you right. for doing that. Um, oh. I'd love to have you again, tell people how they can get the book. And then I would just love to have your personal message. What do you want to leave us with today? <sighs> You know, okay. <clears throat> People can find the book anywhere, um, especially Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Yeah. Um, you know, honey, the coolest thought came to me this morning when I was meditating. Um, I was reading my texts before I meditated, and somebody had sent me a thing and said, I'm full of anxiety today. And I emailed back and said, You know, what is it about? Oh, they didn't know. And into my head came the words, you need to be able to call it by its name so you can call its bluff. Yeah. Good one, huh? I thought, yeah. what a cool thing to say. Thank you. So you can call its bluff. Yeah. So You're absolutely right. Because yeah. what's the opposite of that? Complete avoidance and denial. I know, honey. And just being miserable just miserable so once we can name it then we can call its bluff so uh, for all the folks out there what are your thoughts and beliefs about death and okay once you can identify what they are is that what you want them to be and if not change it change it you can change it you're still alive you can still change your beliefs so that's mm -hmm. what we all need to be aware of is what do we really believe about death? Mm. Yep. Thank you. And thank You're you for welcome. the stories. Uh, I could see why that guy was in his 54 Chevy. That was a cool <laughs> car. I know That's they a very were. cool car. Yep. <laughs> yeah. uh, I want to just tell everybody, please uh. check it out. Go over to echobodine.com. 
um not over your when you go there it's going to be more than there than the book take a look at the courses some of the things that she's offering um also there are other books other things for you to plug into if you go over there and check it out yeah. um and yeah. take a look at what she is creating to connect all of us yeah. with our spirit nature thank Amen. you echo thank you so much oh. Girl, thank you very much. This has been so much fun, Patty. Totally yeah. fun. Thank totally you, honey. Fun. Thank, yeah. you. thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank Benny. Thank you, Benny, for pushing all the right buttons. Jacob, thanks to you. And thanks to all of you out there. Again, what I want to say to you is, look, these are the stories in here that tell you about what keeps us trapped in a place we do not want to be trapped in. No, and no. yet... <laughs> Echo is going to show us the way out. Thank you for tuning us in, turning us on. We'll see you next time, everyone. Mm -hmm.